viewers that have been here for a really long time will recognize the game being displayed right now. It's called Descent, and it was the very first Memory Lane video on this channel. It's also one of the best games to come out of the DOS era of PC gaming, and one of my favorite shooters of all time. You can go watch the video for my full thoughts, and then jump back to this review right here. Now, the eagle-eyed among you will recognize what you're seeing right now, given what you were just shown. If you just returned from that Memory Lane video, I should clarify that this is not the third sequel I referenced back in 2015. Descent Underground, along with the Descent IP, has been thoroughly buried in an early access grave I doubt it'll ever claw its way out of. No, what you're seeing now is the original Descent patched and upscaled to run on a modern Windows 10 PC. This comes as a result of one of the best things about the modding community, which is the ability to give an excellent franchise whose IP has been tied up in one development hell or another the ability to still thrill fans decades after release. And now we're into our third game of capture for the video. The eagle-eyed among you will probably still recognize what you're seeing right now. And for those of you confused because you're thinking he just said that the Descent IP is tied up in development hell but this is clearly another newer Descent game, let me introduce you to Overload. It was built by developer Revival Productions, a studio formed by the creators of the original Descent for the sole purpose of building an actual successor to Descent. It was first released in 2018 for Windows 10, Linux, Mac OS, Xbox One, and PS4, and while it's only a spiritual successor due to the actual branding being in that development hell I mentioned scant seconds ago, that's just a formality. This is exactly the modern Descent sequel I have been wanting for going on five years since I heard Descent Underground was supposedly going to be a thing. And, like, holy crap, everybody, it's perfect. Literally perfect. I'm obviously biased beyond reason, but I still ascribe to the position that anybody who claims to be a skilled player of shooters who hasn't played a full Six Degrees of Freedom shooter like Descent or Overload isn't actually allowed to claim that. Gameplay like this breaks your brain in some pretty fundamental ways you don't get in games with analogs for up and down, which includes any sort of flight sim as well. Sure, the controls may be easier to understand than a pure flight sim, but the physics of the thing do not match up with what your average ground-based brain is familiar with. And now, thanks to the passion of some amazing people at Revival, which has basically shut down since releasing Overload because making the best Descent successor possible was their only goal, and they've already done that, any present-day gamer can experience the best the FPS genre has to offer without playing a DOS game from the early 90s. If anything, Overload is actually better than Descent. The updated models, environments, lighting, and textures obviously play a big part in that. Overload is built in Unity 5, which is an industry standard game engine very widely supported and responsible for some of the more gorgeous games we have today. And while the scope of the game, being an indie title funded by Kickstarter, maybe doesn't lend itself to cinematic moments and incredible fidelity the way that something like God of War might, it still looks fabulous and carries the benefit of not being incredibly overweight in terms of hardware requirements for you PC gamers. The controls have also been updated, but only in the way the game controls. And I'm just now realizing how stupid that sentence sounds, but bear with me. The control options haven't really changed since the DOS days with Overload. For instance, the mapping I always used for keyboard plus mouse control in Descent 2 are now the defaults for keyboard plus mouse control in Overload. They're much more familiar to players of modern shooters than using the arrow keys like we did back in the day, and they work really well. The joystick controls have been updated to support twin-stick controllers, but support for old flight-stick-style controllers is still baked in. Now what's really been updated is the way the ship in-game responds to your controls. I never really had a problem with how Descent controlled, or at least not a problem I couldn't dial in with some careful tuning of the mouse sensitivity. But the vessel in Overload handles as smooth and naturally as butter right out of the box, making my Descent-tuned reflexes feel not only comfortable, but genuinely godlike. I kid you not, I'm barely what you could call competent at first-person shooters in general, but I will take any of y'all in Descent or Overload, and against the average shooter gamer, I'm betting on me. And yes, natural as butter. That's the metaphor I just used. You margarine people can suck it. Per Cantor's request, I'm monitoring all communication, internal and external. We have spies on the inside. The story, with additional voiced characters beyond the Material Defender and Dravis, is far more involved than Descent, but with that additional detail, the single-player campaign still sticks very close to its roots, adding stakes and personality without fundamentally altering the way the game is played, which was sort of the issue with Descent 3 and the Free Space games. It's still Descent, you're still basically the Material Defender, and the general idea is still just to clear out these mines and blow the reactors after rescuing all the miners from their rogue mechs, but this time you've got additional motivation and detail beyond just money, money, money. 
And in what really shouldn't be a surprise at this point, given everything I've said thus far, the multiplayer has exactly the same frantic energy as the original Descent, but, you know, with better graphics and smoother controls. It's literally a case of 1 plus 1 equaling 2, and it's glorious. You can play LAN games, and the game's community, accessible via Discord mainly, supports some servers you can use to play online as well. There's also a level editor, because this game was built on the promise of an old DOS game, so of course there is, and modders seem just as interested in this as they have been in Descent, which likely means the game will continue to see new unofficial content despite the fact that Revival has mostly pulled away after delivering exactly what they said they would. In the end, Overload is a must-play for any fan of the shooter genre, because the fact of the matter is, you haven't experienced a real shooter until you've charged into a room, guns blazing, only to get killed by the guy behind and immediately below you. And for less than the cost of a first-run movie and a large popcorn, you can experience first-person gaming the way God intended, in a constant state of vertigo. For the weak stomached among you, maybe also pick up some Dramamine.